right, the second half of class, we're going to do the same thing, but hey, surprise, surprise, they're going to have uncommon denominators. All right, so the title is the same. We're just continuing on. It'll be a little more challenging, but not too much. Again, you should have a colored pen. So if you don't have one, pause, get your colored pen, make sure your title's ready to go, and let's start again. Also, I realized just a minute ago as I downloaded this, I cut off the bottom step just a little bit, but I know that you can figure it out because it was just a little bit. So we'll, we'll hope to do better this time. Okay, so we're going to look at ones now that don't have common denominators. So let's start with what we already know. Let's start with a fraction. Okay, so we look at the fractions here with just plain old numbers. We look at the bottoms and we say, are they the same? No, they're not. Okay. So we need to create common denominators. And so we look at them and we say, what's the common denominator here? It's not going to be 4 because you can't divide 8, okay? It's only multiplying. So that would mean that the common denominator would be 8, and we're going to need to multiply this side by 2. To create common denominators, you can only multiply. You cannot add, you cannot subtract, and you cannot divide. So you're going to create common denominators by multiplying only. Okay, now when we had an equal sign and we were trying to balance the equations, what we did to one side we had to do to the others, but when we're dealing with fractions, we have to keep it proportional too. So what we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top to keep it proportional. So we'd have to multiply the top and the bottom here. All right, then we distribute this together. We get 6 eighths plus 5 eighths. Oh, we know how to do this, right? We add the tops. We have 11 eighths. Remember, we're just counting how many eighths there are, so we don't add the bottoms. And we can't reduce this, and we're going to leave it in an improper fraction. You go, well, Mrs. Woolley, in seventh grade, we always had to put it in a mixed fraction. Well, in algebra, we don't, specifically because of this kind of problem. We're going to throw in x's and x squareds, and how do you know if it's improper? You don't. So we're just going to leave it as is at the end. All right, now here's the steps coming up. All right, I'm going to go through them, then we'll pause so you have a chance to write them all down, okay? So it's going to be just like last time. We're not going to factor the tops. We're going to look at the bottoms first, and they're going to be different. So we're going to multiply here. We're going to multiply the top and the bottom of each fraction by what is missing. And what I mean by missing is sometimes it's not just going to be a number. Sometimes it'll be a letter, okay, or even a whole um, parenthesis. All right, then we're going to distribute the tops and the bottoms together. Then we can factor and reduce and rewrite. It's exactly the same as before, except we have this top thing right here. Okay, I know it went fast, so we'll pause, get it written down. Then we'll do some examples. All right, here's our examples. So we're going to start with 4x plus 7 divided by 6 and 3x minus 1 divided by 2. They look complicated. It's really not. It's just an extra step. All right, so we look at the bottoms. We need to have common denominators. The common denominator is not 2 because we cannot divide to get a common denominator, only multiply. So we say, all right, the common denominator is 6. That means we need to multiply this side by 3. And to balance it, we also need to multiply the top by 3. Because, of course, 3 divided by 3 is just 1, right? That's why it keeps it balanced. All right. Then we're going to need to distribute here, bloop, bloop, and we're going to end up with 4x plus 7 over 6, nothing changed there, plus 3 times 3x is 9x, 3 times negative 1 is going to be negative 3 over 6. All right, we have common denominators, so now we're just going to add the numerators together. Remember, common terms, so no pink underwear, x's with x's, and numbers with numbers. So. We're going to have 4x plus 9x's gives me 13x's. And 7 minus 3, remember the sign in front, gives us a positive 4, all divided by 6. Now, is this our answer? Yes, because we do not have a common denominator here. There's no x squared. We can't factor, so we're done. All right, here's the one where I talked about things. So check this out. The denominators here are 4 and x. So what's the common denominator? And you go, Mrs. Willie, I have no idea. How do I know? Well, think about a fraction. 
If you had a 3 and a 5, what would the common denominator be? You just multiply them together and say, oh, it's 15. We can always do that. So what's the common denominator between 4 and x? We just multiply them together. 4 times x is 4x. That's our common denominator. So if our common denominator is 4x, what are we missing on this fraction? Well, we're missing an x, 4 times x. So we're going to multiply top and bottom times x. Over here, we're missing a, a 4. So we're going to multiply top and bottom times 4. All right, let's distribute and see what we got here. That means we're going to have 2 times x, which is just 2x. 4 times x is 4x. Minus 2 times 4 is 8. And x times 4 is 4x. Beautiful. We have common denominators. So now we can subtract our numerators. We have 2x minus 8 over 4x. Are we done? Well, we got to see if we can factor. This can't be factored. It's a single term. Can this be factored? Yeah, right? Look for the GCF first. The GCF is 2. Our leftovers are x minus 8 all over 4x. And now we're looking at things that are exactly the same or unattached. These guys are unattached. So you can reduce the 2 and the 4. So your answer is going to be, hope I don't run out of room again. Let's just slide it over a little bit. OK. So our answer is going to be x minus 8 divided by 2x. Now, you might say, Mrs. Woolley, do I have to have the parentheses around the answer? No, you don't. But I leave them there so that I remember I can't cancel out these x's because this is attached with a plus or a minus sign. That way I know. I'm done reducing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, pause so that you can have a chance to write this down. And then the substitute's going to hand out your homework for the evening. It is what lives in the sea and yells. It's easy, so you are going to do all 12 problems. But it is a block day, which means it's not due again until Thursday. If you have trouble, you can watch this video again. It'll be loaded up attached to the assignment. Um, you can also come in at brunch or lunch tomorrow because I will be back. And remember, you know you love math.